shocking moment Tennessee high school student pepper sprays teacher twice after he confiscated her phone in class. And there's a lot here. Some people associate this with the the increase in crime, rec- recklessness, the, uh, the the collapse of authority in our institutions. And uh, I thought it was interesting because we we're talking about whether or not this woman was justified in pepper spraying this soy boy teacher who collapsed and falls to his knees after getting pepper sprayed for taking her phone. And I just find the whole thing interesting. The first point is just, yo, our schools are messed up. Yeah. Don't, don't have your kids in these schools. And the second thing is, to what degree should we entertain the authority of these of these teachers? But let's just start with this. A Tennessee high school teacher pepper sprayed twice by a student. Assault took place at Antioch High School outside of Nashville. Reports indicate the teacher had taken the student's phone. And I'm pretty sure she says in the video, give me back my phone. So what do you guys think? Yeah. There's, well, I think that, I mean, it, it's a microcosm for all the things that are wrong, right? So we have one, we have an absence of masculinity because I had teachers that if you took something, if he took something from you, that was going to be your problem, right? It, it didn't matter if you had pepper spray. I, I had a, I had a guy that was in my high school who was our disciplinarian. He literally had like held a guy up by his throat against the wall. Should you do that? No, it was a pub, private school. So we could get away with certain things. And people wanted that of their kids because he stepped out of line. So he had the physical ability to dominate. And this guy gets dominated by a chick with a with a pepper spray. That's not a good not a good look. But you made an interesting point, and I agree with it. The, people have a lot of personal information on their phones. So, wait, but, and that but, guy is an a, he's an agent of the government. That's the thing that yeah. I hadn't thought of. So, is he is he representing a an unlawful search and seizure there under the Fourth Amendment even? Because there's some interesting. He's representing certain authorities and power as a member of a of a local the government. government. He we, is the b- government. Before the show, when we were pulling up these stories, I said, this would be really interesting, really interesting to talk about because I got to tell you, if I was in a school and someone, I don't care who, teacher or otherwise, tried taking my phone, you be, be, be prepared for me to physically defend myself. I, th- there there was no circumstance for me in, 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 you know, after a certain age, I suppose, where a teacher would ever get away with anything like that. I mean, I'm like, I'm 13 years old. If they tried taking my Pokemon from me, I'd be like, I'll leave the building before you touch my property. So we're talking about a cell phone. This teacher, this, 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 it's a common trope, like the teacher takes the phone away. You're not touching my phone. I got private messages in there. Mm-hmm. You got you got messages with, with with your parents in there. And the teacher's like, I'm going to take that from you. You ain't touching it. I will leave before I, before I let you do that. When he grabbed her phone from her, that's theft. That's seizure by the, you, you point out, government. Someone I, I hadn't thought government. about it until we were literally in the moment here. But yeah. there is some interesting implications about that. And I do think that the correct answer is, is send her out of the room. Look, you're being a distraction. You've been removed from the classroom. I'm done with you. Go deal with the administration. That's their job. And you go back to teaching. That's yeah, probably the right move. So we've got a, a couple of mistakes. Like, right, we're, we're, we're like five stops down from where things shouldn't have happened. But Has this always been the case that teachers would take something from the students? I think it depends on. So there are certain places, especially private schools, where you sign away, you know, yeah. your, your parents, your minders, your your um, the people that have the authority, your power of attorney are going to say that they have certain authorities to do certain things like that. And, you know, when I was a kid, like we didn't have that. <laughs> like, there was no my cell phone that I had, which I think I got when I was 17, was attached to a car. And the only way you were bringing it in <laughs> is if you were bringing the whole thing in. It came out of the console. So that wasn't a real possibility. And that was I was an outlier. Most people didn't have that that capability. Uh, that being said, I don't think you should get pepper sprayed and hit your knees with your back to your enemy and cover yourself and cry like a woman that that is very offensive to me as a dude i just i just it, it's troubling to watch someone go do that kind of action it's like hey man you, you lost your man card too not only did you lose to a chick but you lost your man card and now no one's gonna look at you again yeah a cop should just or i mean the 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 uh teacher should have just kicked her out let her keep her phone send her get out. out of here yep leave i mean it's probably gonna be kicking her out every day and you're gonna end up kicking her out of school because she's probably not gonna listen tomorrow she'll be back she didn't look like she could take direction no, well, based on her, her interactions. No. But also, as you mentioned, I don't know what's... You, you mentioned the possibility that we're talking about someone probably 16 to 18 based on the high school, right? And yep. she was an older high school student. Um, she got private photos. She may have private photos, which we could. Uh, we don't have to mm-hmm. discuss the nature of, but probably would be actually a crime to possess yep. uh, if you're a dude. So that's not something you want to get it's involved just in. Like the funny, it's just bad actions all but it, around. But it's also funny when like she pepper sprays him and he just falls to his knees. It, it hurts me. It yeah. hurts my masculinity. Like and I want I, him to go we, chop we, wood. Like <laughs> he needs to grow me, a beard. He has a beard too, doesn't he? Is this? Let's is see. this? The, yeah, there, where's the? He where, has a beard. Is that the video? That's yeah. The, yeah, he's he here. We go. To, watch. He, he's like running from her. Yes, he needs to shave his face immediately. And she's like Pepe Le Pew, just like walking casually. Oh, did they skip oh, the part where he falls to his on. knees? No, they, it's coming at the end. She sprays. What is what is he doing? This is look at this. There she gets him. Oh, down, surrender, fail, turns his back. What he goes, is? Hey, he's still trying like, to maintain the control of the phone. That's the only upside oh. to this guy is that he held onto the property, so he won that minor minor victory while losing his man card. That's wild. 
Yeah, and people around him are like, I just got pepper sprayed too. You know, the thing about pepper spray, it's a very imprecise uh, defensive mm -hmm. weapon. It sprays yeah. all over. It is the worst. In fact, I remember going through the academy and everybody has to get sprayed with it. But the one thing they said is like, here's your pepper spray. Now put it somewhere where you'll never use it because it's awful. If you ever use it, <laughs> like when you see a guy like on a search warrant, if you're trying to subdue a subject and they're like, I got this, I'm going to, uh, nobody wants that happening. Like, it sprays nobody, it's everybody. Everybody's going to be pepper sprayed. it burns everything. It sucks. People think it's like, it gets in your mucous membranes, it burns. Yep. But right. on your skin, you're skin, irritated. You're everything. like, uh, I remember taking a shower afterwards and my neck was burning. Yeah, like, this is terrible. But yeah, when we were in, uh, we were at the uh, J17 riots. Was it J? No, no, J20th uh, riots in, in 2017 when Trump was getting inaugurated. I was there too. And we were, you know, me and Luke are like drenched in pepper spray. <laughs> God, you go take a shower afterwards and it just burns. It just reactivates. Yeah, it just mm -hmm. reactivates and it's burning all over. 100. percent I don't know, man. I saw this story. I thought it was CS fascinating. is way worse, by the way. What is CS, CS gas? CS yeah. gas. Yeah, the the, the uh, when, tear gas is way worse for me. When we were in uh, Ferguson. The police were using CS smoke, so they called it yep. tear gas. And so that's CN the stuff that fogs and kind of lingers down there yeah. on you. And oh. uh, and CNN reported there was no tear gas being fired; it was just smoke. And uh, it's because these are evil people. I'm pretty sure it was Don Lemon. So no, Ryan, while, while, Ryan, Ryan Riley was the guy who saw the earplugs on that's the ground right. and thought they were rubber bullets. He's that's one right. Of my, he's one of my biggest. He's, like, are these he's probably bullets? watching. He's one of my biggest fans. We that were. Uh, uh, I'm on the ground. And we are gagging in tear gas. And I, I started to pass out because I got into a cloud of it yeah. and tunnel vision starts forming. It's a Ox choking agent. Right. It's it's displacing the oxygen in my lungs. And then I fall down and I got lucky. Some kid splashed water in my face. It's a crazy, crazy thing. I, I have no idea. So um, I'm in Ferguson, tear gas everywhere. Gunshots go off. Cops are like, go, go run. So I'm, I'm running and I'm, <gasps> and I walk through a cloud of tear gas, inhale it all. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I can't, I can't breathe. I'm like, it's just my lungs aren't working. And then I'm like, <gasps> And then I get tunnel vision where everything starts turning black to a point. Oof. And then I just fall down on the grass on my back. And the next thing I know, some kid splashes water in my face and I go. <gasps> and <coughs> I shouldn't have done that. Uh, I don't know how that kid knew. Or maybe he was just, just fortunate. A, yeah, just gave a but, sympathetic But splashing, splashing water triggers the, uh, uh, the inhale reflex or whatever. What's crazy is we, we used to call that meeting the wizard. Meeting the wizard. <laughs> yeah. When you, when, so you've seen the, the Wizard of Oz, right? And yeah. everything, oh my the, gosh. what people don't realize is that when you start getting hypoxic like that, and I've been there too many times in a, in a very chaotic way, but what happens is you lose color vision first and yeah. you don't know it. It's very insidious. Hypoxia is an insidious sort yeah. of move. So you lose the color vision. And then, like you say, you get that Bugs Bunny at the end of the Looney Tunes where it starts tightening down. <laughs> That's all, up. folks. Yeah, and you're, looking, you're looking through the through the tunnel, right? And then that goes out. And what other people don't realize, too, is that when you do that in slow motion, especially if you're underwater, the last thing to go is, is your auditory nerves, different nerves. Mm. So you'll actually stop being able to see, but you'll still hear. So you can feel things around you, you can hear things around you, but you can't see anything. Yeah. And then you go out. We call that meeting the wizard because when, <laughs> because because that's when you go to Oz, right? Uh, and yeah. then when you wake back up, like obviously, like you had the kids splash you, thank God. And then you get that that uh, you know uh, recovery, and you pop up, and then everything kind of comes back out at once, and you get you get the color vision. So that's yeah. kind of going to Oz. Um, it's 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 I don't know, man. It's a it, phenomenon that very few people can can relate to if they haven't ever. You can't fake it. You can only experience. Oh, it. Oh, for sure. And I and I I wonder what would have happened to me if that kid didn't. Wasn't happening. He was standing with a bottle of water and he just poured it on my face. And I'm like, <gasps> like it was the craziest thing. And I'm like, whoa. And I was like, boom, back. Everything was normal again. Yeah. Goofy enough. You've probably got about two, three minutes worth of uh, sitting there stagnant without breathing even. And you're still okay. But it can get bad fast. And, and that's why tear gas is one of those things where yeah. it's an area avoidance tool. You can pivot to what happened at January 6th. They were releasing this stuff and it was just going everywhere and they were lobbing it into the crowd and then they were forcing the crowd into the barriers, right? right? So it's that just tells me that those people don't know how to use that particular tool, which is not their fault. They probably weren't trained on it. You spray it where you don't want people to be, which is usually where you are and then you put your mask on and then it's an area denial as what? opposed to putting it into people and making them run like you did. People don't understand too, when I was in uh, Turkey, the police fired it into a tunnel and the people just collapsed. It's yeah. Like it's, there's no air anymore and no. it's, they just started falling down. And then people were like, someone's got, you got to run in there and drag them out. Don't breathe. Yeah. The, the, so the crazy thing too, is people don't realize that the stuff they use in the U S is nothing. The, the stuff they <laughs> use. We in, have rules here. Yeah. yeah. In Brazil, I was like, ah, tear gas, say nothing. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, mucus is just pouring out of every orb. Like, ah. that, that is my experience. Yeah. Full on what they do for everybody who goes through basic training. So anybody who's done military training has seen this. They don't do it the same way for, for cops as far as I know, but some guys get it. But you go into like a chamber and then they fill the chamber up with smoke and you've got your mask on and you're like, this looks like a really bad place to take off a mask. And then they tell you to take it off yeah. and then you have to say a paragraph of some kind. Usually it's a, you know, a rote memory thing. And you're going like, 
and you just have no ability to put any <laughs> you're like and you have to get out the, the paragraph or they won't let you out so the worst you know you're just is it kind of fun though it's yeah, i mean everything the adrenaline fun. rush the uh, right. adrenaline rush right. after you come out is insane so when i, I went i would have rather been in because i have everything empty out of my eyes my ears my nose yep. i'm like it's vomiting like retching nose. nose it's horrible when i went in there when i was in they they make you take your mask off and you have to wait for everyone in the room to get the mask That's off right. before you can put it on to clear it then you take it off again and then you say whatever it is then you put it on again and clear it then they let you out so you're standing there holding the mask in front of your waiting for all the idiots that don't that lick windows and on you the bus. and you know and you, you can then you can hear the guy just go he's like we're waiting on everyone we're waiting on and you're just sitting there dying wanting to kill the person right so yeah it but when you when you come out the adrenaline and stuff after you survive you're walking out and well, you, you feel fresh, like you accomplished you something. feel yeah. it's great you know the, the gas they Super used high. in turkey was not as strong as Brazil, but it was so intense that the masks we had didn't work at all. I like that you're a connoisseur of CS gas. That's oh, like a, oh that's not a thing that everybody has in their repertoire. You well, should so put that on your Tim on your can resume. tell you about the flavor profile. That's of what I'm telling you. That's right. That's right. There's a fine bouquet with a hint of olive. He spits it back out, clears his palate with some water, and spray it again. <laughs> give, give me another, you're not actually supposed taste. to swallow it. You're, you, you know, like it's like tasting one. Remember, I mean, uh, remember when Homer became a mall cop and he pepper sprayed his eggs and then he ate them. <laughs> that's how it goes. So. One of the one of the things I remember when I was in Portland, I, I went into one of the places. This is off duty, so we're just like you know, we went to Whole Foods and got some food. We went to a you know a pub and stuff like that. And me and my buddies were walking through, and at some point we went through some park, and there's all the metal railings. As you know, as the CS dissipates, it doesn't go away. It just comes out of the air and it settles. So you'll see it like on on railings, and every once in a while somebody will touch the railing where the CS was, and it activates, or they'll get some of the pepper spray, and it activates on a hand. And so I just remember one of my buddies is like in front of me going down these stairs, and then he reaches his hand up and he goes, "Don't touch that rail." And we're like, what? And he's like, it's spicy. Like, you couldn't come up with anything else, but it was legit spicy. You watch him, his hand is over there throbbing, and you go like, oh, yeah, I don't want this. You can put on your eggs. You get your man card back. If you, if you drop to your knees in a high school after stealing a girl's phone and you cry like a girl, I think you get your man card back if you put it on your eggs like for the, like that, a week. Dude, I remember when I was like, I must have been 12 or 13, and I was in my buddy's garage, and he had some pepper spray. I was like, what is this? And I just like sprayed it. It was, it was horrible. It that's, was horrible. I didn't get the rock, full though. exactly. I didn't get the full effect of like having it directly sprayed in my face, but it was not a fun experience. I was like, okay, now I understand why this is used as a deterrent. Yeah, yeah. You don't want. Yeah, that. I didn't use, like uh, that. Pepper balls are, oh. I think, relatively common now in riot control stuff. And yeah. I've I've been uh, hitting the face with a pepper ball Pass. Rico ricochet. So when I was in Baltimore, it was the I think it was the Freddie Gray riots. The cop, for no reason, me and two other people, clearly with cameras filming, he fired at something. I think it was aiming for my face. But it hit something to my left, like the wall, and then sprayed plastic bits and, and pepper all into my face. And I'm like, ah! Did you have glasses on? No. You knew now, though. Eye protection, very critical. Well, normally, like even in my old YouTube picture, it's like we had the goggles. Yeah. And I'm like on a roof in New York. And but you don't know when to put the goggles on, and it sucks to put them on the whole time. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> to, and then we also, you catch it, we would also wear the, the gas masks on our neck and the goggles. And it's just like you want to try to avoid using them because you want to maximize your sensory, you know. For sure. You know, your awareness. Well, that's the other thing. Most people have those things. And you see, I, know, I saw Antifa guys in, in Portland, and uh, I don't know, maybe gals or maybe neither, whatever they wanted to identify us. And they Doesn't have all matter. that equipment. But a lot of them, if you don't train in that stuff, if you don't spend time in it, you're you're lost because the second like imagine if somebody just suddenly just gave you just like a tube to look through and you're like here's your new world yeah and by the way you can't hear anything which changes your balance it changes your jaunt like the way you step the way you mm. identify cuts out your peripheral vision you don't know who's standing to your left or your right it, it gets they really dangerous those, they have those scary. full face masks where it's a sheet of plastic basically over your face yep. and those are better but you still have barriers on your left and your right so it's you know looking through like you said like a tunnel yeah. Well, you imagine the guys that are running out there with night vision. You're a security guy. Tell me about. Well, he's we, like, oh, I got to invest, and it's like, it's a you got to spend time. Yeah, in it. You got to go for right. walks yeah. with night vision on, just mm -hmm. in your neighborhood. You, you look you, like you, a psychopath, but you got to do it. I've, I've got some <laughs> I nighttime it. mischief. Some you might be involved it. in nighttime mischief as long as you stay on the road, right? But well, yeah, I've you got to know, Tim. Yeah, I've got the soup. The, the really expensive ones. So like, are 10. they the, the panos? Or are they the no, the binos. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, like some thirty ones or something. Yeah, I don't know what they're called, but very expensive. They're like ten grand, and they they sit right here, and you can't see around. Around. It's you bizarre. See straight. Too. They're you know, they're awesome. You look up at the sky and you That's can see it. satellites. Yeah, and you're no, like, it, it could be a spiritual experience for people. Yeah, it's looking at the sky through night vision is. That's what spiritual. I did with my mother in law. I actually shared it with my mother in law. Changed her. She was like, "This is incredible. This is worth the price." You of see these. satellites. Get, yeah, you could see everything. It's crazy. Get IR awesome. flashlights for your guns. 
now. Yeah. So you put the IR flashlights mm-hmm. on. Right, right. And right. then when you turn the light on, only you can see the light. <laughs> it's pitch black for everybody else, and sure. you can see the light. Well, Get a laser in there, you're, then you're set to go. Moon's out, goon's out. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.